Welcome to Sapphire One. This is a overview of the Sapphire One toolbar. We have eight distinctive modes within the Sapphire One toolbar, and those toolbar modes are accounts, which are driven from the mode drop-down. We have inventory. Once we select inventory, the menu and the palette will change. If we go down to job projects, being our third option, we have assets. We have payroll, HR, we have our management, we have our accounts mode, and we have finally our workbook mode. Now, there are the eight modes within Sapphire 1. Once we navigate into a particular mode and we select that drop down, for example, if I want to go into clients and I want to go and look at a client inquiry, all I need to do is double click on the client and I can go in and, or I can use my toolbar again, I can modify that particular client. And then I'm presented up in the top left hand corner with a page drop down and I have a series of pages that I can navigate down through for that particular client. So everything within the Sapphire One application is driven from the toolbar. In the accounts mode, we have various modes or menu items. So we have receivables and under the receivables menu, you have your data entry. In this case, we have client receipt, sorry, cash receipt, client invoice, credit memo, client journal, client receipt, and client refund. And then we have an inquiry. We have our transactions, allocations, client, and class. If we go to our transaction inquiry, once again, double click, and that'll take us to a transaction screen. We have certainly different find capability so if I want to go and quickly find all my client receipts I can hold my finger on the control key here select type and now just selected a subset of my client receipts and then everything within Sapphire One has a keyboard command so by selecting control E that will show me all my records and I'm back to the transaction inquiry. If I come down here, then I've got my processing window, so I can double click on that. And the beauty of Sapphire One is that we can have multiple windows open simultaneously. So if we come back here to clients and I can have a client window open up, have the ability to have all the windows open simultaneously. And once I close those windows, obviously I can drop back down here and we can go and close all those windows. That's our receivables menu, and then we have our reporting. We have details, balances, transactions, statements, and dashboards. And the dashboards will present us with a series of dashboards. We've set some samples up, but as a user, you can go and create all your own dashboards. So you can create as many dashboards as you like within the Sapphire One application. And that's our receivables drop down, and then we go across here to our payables. A mirror image of what we just saw in the receivables menu. Once again, we have data entry, we have our inquiry, we have our processing, and we have our reporting. If we go into a vendor inquiry, we can drill down and we can look at a particular vendor, and we have the same functionality with all the various pages, which we'll go through in later videos to go through all the pages within clients and vendors. And then we can close back out of there. We've also got under payables, menu, the next one along is the general ledger. So once again, the functionality is the same. We have the data entry, we have our inquiry, we have our posting and our reporting. And those menu items are all accessible from what we call the accounts mode within Sapphire One. If we now go over to the inventory mode and we look at inventory mode, here we're presented with a total of six so we have sales, purchases, inventory, manager, point of sale, and then the last one there is the users, which just drops us back. So fundamentally five di distinct modes within the inventory mode. If we go into sales again, we've got the ability to go to our inquiries. Again, we've got transaction inquiry, transaction line inquiry, salespeople, and client inquiry. And then here we can do our data entry. So we've got our client quote, client order, client invoice, client return, cash invoice, and cash return. And then once again, it's mirrored 
the same as we saw in the accounts mode with receivables and payables, we have our purchases mode. So here I can go into a vendor requisition, vendor order, inwards goods, vendor purchase, vendor return, cash purchase, cash return. Each one of these data entry screens will have separate explainer movies on that we can go into those in details. And then of course we've got our transactions again, so we can go in and look at all the transactions for purchases. And we've got our processing screens, requisitions, arrivals and posting, and then our reporting. And then, of course, we've got our dashboards again down the bottom. And then the next one on the list is our inventory. So in the inventory, we have our data entry, stock take entry, transaction entry, build order entry, and build entry. And then we have our build transactions, our adjustments, transaction lines, inventory. By double clicking on that, that takes us into our inventory. And once again, if I double click here, I'm presented with my pages menu and all my different options within inventory, which once again will be explained in separate inventory movies. And if uh, then we go down to inventory locations, inventory classes, price book locations, MSDS, serial and budget tracking, bill of materials, matrix, open to buy, and additional additions and deductions. And then we have our posting screens, and then our detailed stock take pricing analysis. And then there's a extended menu here, pricing analysis, status movements, transactions, bill of materials, work orders, inwards goods, and unit demand. And then we come down here to our last, one of our last next items is manager. If we go to the manager, we have our delivery run manager, manifest, importer, manager, tariff, manifest, vehicle, service, and rebate. And then our last option here in the inventory mode is our point of sale. Full point of sale system built into the inventory mode within Sapphire 1, and we have two options here. We have the point of sale built into the Sapphire 1 client, and then we have our Sapphire web pack, which is the part of the HTML web pack, which will be covered in separate explainer videos. We've got our point of sale screen, so we can once again double click and we can drop in here, and we just drop into that point of sale person here, and we can go into our point of sale screen. So once again, that functionality built into Sapphire 1. We have a higher capability as part of our point of sale, and the post the transactions are higher transactions and then posting transactions lay by payments reconciliations higher returns show reports and dashboards and then we come across to our job projects mode so the job projects mode we're presented with costs resources inventory and job projects so we've got four distinctive menu drop downs within the job projects and here, once again, we've got data entry, we've got inquiry, processing and reporting. And the same functionality, again, we can go in here and look at all our vendors for particular job project mode, or we might go in here and look at the um, vendor order. We might want to go in and look at the particular project. So we come down here and we want to go and look at a particular project. So we double click here and we can go straight in and look at that particular job project. We'll just come back up here now, and we close out of the cost mode, and then you've got the resources, so we've got all our resources within the job project mode, so once again, data entry for resources for timesheet, a project timesheet, an open timesheet, transactions, resources, class, and timelines. Posting those transactions, details, and transactions. And then if we close out of resources, we have a job project. So here we have job project invoice, job project credit memo, transactions, job projects, parent project, parent project task, class, client inquiry. And once again, that's the same as we saw in receivables and the inventory mode. We can go in and look at our various clients for job projects. We have our job project GL, job project costs, the project risk, so we can go and look at risk register for our job projects, full risk management built into job projects, posting those transactions, and then our reporting again, job details, job costs, job analysis, transactions, invoices, job project financials. Here we can actually run a PL balance sheet at the job project level, show, show reports and dashboards in our job projects mode. Then we come across to our assets mode. So the assets mode, we're 
presented with the inquiries, transactions, reports and history. Under our inquiries menu, we have assets, asset class inquiry, location, passwords, contacts, general ledger, vendor and method. And then we're presented with a transaction. So we've got our data entry where you can do the depreciation tax, depreciation company, disposal purchase, revaluation, repair service loans and notes. We've got our inquiries. We've got our post transactions, auto depreciation, reverse depreciation and reverse disposal. And then we come across here to our reports. We have the assets details, the asset valuation, asset valuation by method, asset depreciation, asset history depreciation, the asset management, asset loan liability, asset transactions, asset history valuation, the asset capital allowance schedule and the transactions. And then lastly, the last menu in the assets is our history. So we've got asset transactions and the audit lines. Now each one of these modes, there's an enormous amount of information stored in all these modes, so we can go into those, and, as I said in other explainer videos. The payroll HR, which is part of SAFR 1, we look at the drop down menu within payroll. So here we've got our standing transactions, our working transactions, starting new pay, a pay run, superannuation payable, superannuation adjustments, and super stream export. And then we have a payroll wizard checklist and our working transactions. We have our reports. So within our reports, we have a leave summary, payments, pay slips, condensed pay summaries current pay summaries, allowance totals, allowance total summaries, transaction, sorry, current transaction lines, payment summaries, general ledger and employee summary. And then we come down to administration. Administration, we have our employees, so we double click here. We can drill down. Once again, we've got the same level of functionality and we can drill down into the employee and we can go and look at all the employee pages, which will be covered again in other videos specifically on employees, employee class, employee department, employee entitlements, employee remuneration, leave, allowances, allowance classes, WHS, allowance totals, super vendor, general ledger, job projects and tax scales. And the tax scales can be for whatever tax jurisdiction that you may have your data file set up in. So for example, you may have a company running in Australia, a company running in the US and a company running in the UK, all within the one data file. And those tax scales can be appropriate for each one of those. And then we come across to the history. So we have full history within the payroll. So the transaction lines, history pay, statement of leave. And here's an interesting one, the pay run log for STP. This is something that's applicable to Australia. The, the logging of single touch payroll when Safar One was the first company in the world to be certified for single touch payroll on 1st of May 2018. And then we can select our management mode. So if we're by selecting management mode, we have analysis, management, audits. So if we go to analysis, we have statement of position, months activities, cash movements, account movements, tax calculations. Tax calculations, for example, in Australia, we would be running our BAS here. So we could go and view that BAS or modify it, and we can go in and and look at that particular BAS for SAFR1. So that's the, we're fully compliant. SAFR1 is fully compliant for SBR2 as part of our single touch payroll and tax file declaration certification. And then we close that window. We've got the GST summary, accruals, payroll tax, statement of position two, months activities for payroll, statement of equity, uh, workflow center, and the show reports for analysis. We come down to management. This is where we perform our period in. So we can do period in for clients, inventory, vendors, job projects, timesheets, general ledger, period in for financials, period in for assets, period in for payroll, or period in all. Run standing transactions, end of financial year, end of year assets, and end of year payroll. And then we come into the audit function and we have the receivables, transactions, payables and general ledger. If we then come down to the utilities mode, we're presented with the allocation lines, transactions, audit lines, history ABA files. This is a nice one, so it gives us a complete history of every single ABA file, when it's been changed, 
uh, when it's been uploaded and sent to the bank. And then we've also got um, the history of bank changes as well, so it keeps us a, a track of all bank accounts, BSB and account numbers that have been changed and the user information on that for audit purposes. And there's also workflows around all that, which we'll cover in detail on other explainer videos. The workflows can be linked to bank accounts. Bank reconciliation. So Sapphire 1, we store a copy of all bank reconciliations that have been performed within the Sapphire application. And then we can close out of here. The cashier reconciliation, invoices, sales lines, point of sale reconciliations, times and timelines. And then we come down here, we've got our controls. Here's where we sign Sapphire 1 is fully compliant for SBR2 as part of our single touch payroll and tax file declaration certification. And then we close that window, we've got the GST summary, accruals, payroll tax, Statement of position two, months activities for payroll, statement of equity, uh, workflow centre and the show reports for analysis. We come down to management. This is where we perform our period in. So we can do period in for clients, inventory, vendors, job projects, timesheets, general ledger, period in for financials, period in for assets, period in for payroll or period in all. Right. Run standing transactions, end of financial year, end of year assets and end of year payroll. And then we come into the audit function and we have the receivables, transactions, payables and general ledger. If we then come down to the utilities mode, we're presented with the allocation lines, transactions, audit lines, history ABA files. This is a nice one, so it gives us a complete history of every single ABA file, when it's been changed, uh, when it's been uploaded and sent to the bank. And then we've also got um, the history of bank changes as well, so it keeps us a, a track of all bank accounts, BSB and account numbers that have been changed and the user information on that for audit purposes. And there's also workflows around all that, which we'll cover in detail on other explainer videos. The workflows can be linked to bank accounts. Bank reconciliation. So Sapphire 1, we store a copy of all bank reconciliations that have been performed within the Sapphire application. And then we can close out of here. The cashier reconciliation, invoices, sales lines, point of sale reconciliations, times and timelines. And then we come down here, we've got our controls. Here's where we set up all our user access functionality within the Sapphire 1 application. So uh, lots of different levels that can be set up within all the, and then we've got all our pages. And once again, that'll be explained in separate videos. A lot of functionality sitting behind users. And then we come down here. We've got our user preferences, our user time card, our company, so we, with the Sapphire 1 application, we can set up as many companies as we like. And here, we've just logged into the one company, but this particular data file has three companies set up, one in Sydney, one in Melbourne, and one also in the UK. Departments, so you can set up as many departments as you like, your tasks, workflow rules, and inventory alarms. You've got your organisational chart for all your workflow management, your system control controls, master defaults, FX currency settings, re uh, remote access defaults, lists, ch change menus and change names. And then the last on the list is the direct print layouts and the custom reports. And then we come back here, we've got our utilities and the utilities mode, we have our custom function, custom tools, error controller, server administration, uh, host web server, verify and post and retrieve upgrade values and plugin keys. And then we come down to what we call our eighth mode, and this is our workbook mode. And in the workbook mode, we can handle functions like leave requests for employees, contacts, actions, documents, pitches, tracking notes, mail book. We simply have a mail book that you can run on a webpack or run on the normal client for 
logging all your mail that's come into the organisation, and whether that be by courier or snail mail or whatever it may be. Phone log, that's integrated as part of our soft phone system. A visitors book that's been built into Sapphire One so we can track all our visitors within the Sapphire One application. And then we have our calendar, document management and PDF capture. So full PDF capture within the Sapphire One application. So that's a quick view of what we call our eight modes within Sapphire One. Now, we haven't gone into detail on each one of those modes. There's, a, there's an, a lot of detail on each one of those modes, but it gives us a look and feel for each one of those modes. Now, these modes can be driven using the F key. So if I use F1, it'll take to, to accounts mode, F2 inventory, F3 job projects, F4 assets, F5 payroll, F6 management, F7 utilities and F8 workbook. Now, once we're in a particular mode, if we select, for example, uh, Alt-R, that'll take us straight into the receivables menu, and then we can, uh, once again, use our, our down arrows and arrow down to a particular menu. So within the Sapphire One application, everything can be driven from the keyboard. Now, the data entry screens, if we go to a data entry screen and we go to, for example, a client receipt, we've got the ability within the client receipt is just go and search that particular client. So we'll say it's the architects resource group here and uh, there's our receipt number. They're going to pay us $1,100 today. Uh, we can select here the payment type. We're electing to to note that they're paying us by electronic funds transfer. We can save a memo here and we can simply go and save that. We can go and look at transactions. So we can go and look at a particular transaction. So we've got a tab here across the top. We can look at all the transactions for that particular customer, got the type of transaction. All these can be sorted. So whenever you see that, that it can all be sorted. We have a client summary here. So. Here we've got some information on the client, the unposted values, uh, the contact details and various information, ABN numbers and the current balance, the 30 days, 60 days, 90 days. We've got some controls here. We've got the, um, we'll scroll back up here. We've got what's been allocated, the GL transactions and any error codes that may appear on that particular transaction. By green ticking that, I can go and save that and then it'll go ask me to allocate that and I can go and allocate that. Now if I if I chose to, I could do a split allocation on that and I could say um, allocate part of that to that transaction and I could go and allocate the balance there. And then that's saved into the record. Now, if I go back into a transaction inquiry, I can see that I've just entered that client receipt and I can see there's my client receipt for $1,100. If I go and look at the allocation, I can see that it was allocated to two invoices and the allocation split was $550 on each. So that's a, a simple data entry in our accounts receivable, simply just doing a client receipt within the application. Very quick, very simple, easy to use within the system. And then the inquiry screen, if we want to go and look at that, as I saw there, we go back and we go and double click and we can go and look at that particular inquiry. So we can go back and look at that system. Now if I want to post that transaction, I can simply come down to my posting function within the screen here. So I can go to my posting and I can say yes, I want to go and post that particular client receipt. So once I post that receipt and the receipt is posted, if I go back and look at that as a transaction inquiry, you'll denote that it has a status of no, uh, yes now, it was no. If we double click on that, I can't modify that once that transaction's been posted. So it's been posted in the system and then that will flow through to our bank rec. So if we just uh, have a quick look at that and we go over here to our bank rec, select our main bank account was where we uh, receded that to and there's our $1,100 that we've just receded into the Sapphire One application. And then we've, we've got our various reporting functions so we can go and re report on that and uh, let's go and have a look at the client for example. So we go down here to the client now and we look at that client and we come down to the 
credit control window and we can go and have a look at that particular client receipt so we can go and look here and we can go and see that that's been allocated within the application and we can go and look at all the balances here so nice and simple functions within the application we've got the ability to drill down on any of those transactions so if, he, if we want here we can go and open a particular transaction and we can go back and open that in the source document and look back and there's a client receipt that we just entered and we can drill back and look at that so the functionality to drill back from the application to go back to the actual originating source document all right thank you for taking the time to look at sapphire one overview of the sapphire one toolbar